No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George and as the majority of you guys already know, I have my own Facebook community where I basically help you guys you know, get started with SMMA, how to get your first clients, is everything is in this community and above all else, it is for free of course, so everyone that is just starting out uh, basically gathers up in this community there's a free mini course as well that teaches you how to get onto upwork how to basically leverage freelancer platforms like upwork to get your clients in and to basically get the ball rolling and um, all that good stuff is in this facebook group and what i've noticed is that a lot of the questions that i get from this youtube channel uh, quick side note most of the youtube uh, videos are basically inspired by questions that I've gotten in this Facebook group but the questions that I get based off of my videos are usually questions that are already asked and answered in this um, Facebook community so what I thought I'd do today is I'll actually go through some of the questions that are in this Facebook group and um, basically just answer them here live for you guys on YouTube just so you get a bit of an idea of um, just like the frequently asked questions and uh, also basically just to answers some of the questions that most of you guys are asking me privately or via um, comments and dms etc because like i said most of these questions are already asked and answered in this uh, facebook group so without further ado let's um get started so the first one or first question is from cody he said i'm working on my agency and i do not have do not have any clients yet my focus niche is going to be car dealers i want to try to go white label and route with actual ads because i'm not an ad expert yet um, I know I need to have my contract before I can close clients. What is the best way to find one? Um, I would probably start searching in either Facebook groups or on Upwork. It doesn't really matter where you find this contractor from. Uh, the most important thing is that you understand and you know what that person is doing. The mistake I made when I was starting out is that I outsourced things, but I didn't really know if that person was doing a good job or not because I didn't have the expertise. So he could tell me, oh yeah, the cost per click has gone down. And I'll be like, okay, that's that's great. Not knowing that it didn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, and you know, yes, it was cheap and cheerful. And the profit margin that I, I basically took home was big, but the results just weren't there for our clients. So um, first piece of advice that I can give you is do your research into Facebook ads first before you do outsourcing. I'm not saying that you need to be the expert, but make sure that you know what to look for and what is a good result and what isn't. Uh, and then secondly, when you do get in touch with a potential contractor, make sure that he sends over portfolio material, case studies, and above all else, also get this person on a call and get them to share your, uh, their screen and show them live examples of what they've done and what results um, they've achieved and also what you can do if you do get a client in uh, prior to you getting this contractor give him analyst access and just ask him, what would you do in this specific situation and then see what answer he comes up with. So a uh, good question from uh, Cody and you know we've already got four comments so that question was already answered but just to give you guys uh, an answer here on, on the YouTubes. Um, let's see what else. Then there's a question about the audience insights which uh, is more specific to that moment in time. Then let's see, we've got a question from Ashan. He says, um, I've got a quick question. I would love some advice from everyone. So I'm doing quite well with local clients and I've decided to do some overseas outreach. I've managed to land a few meetings this week. My question is, what is the best payment method for overseas clients? Where I am, uh, PayPal is not available to receive money. I'm wondering whether overseas bank transfer will be a pain point for potential clients. Thanks in advance. So in terms of taking payments, I use Stripe for everything. We've used PayPal back in the day. We had some issues with it where PayPal PayPal froze our accounts and we had 10k in the PayPal that we didn't take out for a few weeks and um, basically PayPal saw that as suspicious or something like that we had to verify it we had to send documentations of the business etc um, and then from there I just shied away from PayPal because um, I just I just didn't trust it anymore basically and in my opinion Stripe is the more professional option anyway because it's it's credit cards you know that person doesn't have to pay through PayPal etc you can just fill out their credit card details and, and um, you know pay there and then you've got the credit card details on file as well so if they can continue you can set up a subscription and bill them and so on and so forth so try Stripe if Stripe is not possible 
then try if you can see uh, try and see if you can set up a standing order or any kind of automated billing um, with your actual bank so through wire transfer but stripe would be my number one recommendation then um, moving on another question from idris Hey guys, I published a campaign last night. I've gotten 16 link clicks and uh, nine landing page views. I've searched why this could be. Okay, so there's a drop off from 16 to nine. And I think it's because my landing page may be too slow. What can I do to make the page load faster? Also, at what point should I make changes to add landing pages a couple of days or week? Thanks. Okay, so first of all, 16 link clicks and nine landing page views is nowhere near enough data to make any adequate decisions. Um, you know, basically what you're doing is you're making 100% of the decisions with only 10% of the data, if 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 even that. Um, so make sure that all of your decisions are based on an adequate amount of data. Don't make any changes that early into the process. But with that said, um, 16 link clicks does not necessarily mean that they are outbound and they are actually onto the page. Maybe they accidentally click on the link and then you quickly go back to Facebook. Um, maybe it is true that the landing page is slow. What you can do is go to a speed tester on Google, see what um, you know, basically what speed comes out of that. If you think that it is too slow, then what you could do is decrease the size of the images make sure that any unnecessary videos are removed from the page as well, any unnecessary plugins and so on and so forth. With that said, um, just a quick mention, even Pixel and Google Analytics, etc., all that data is still in the code, right? And that will slow down the website. Of course, you know, do not remove the Pixel because we need that to track the data, but I'm just letting you know. Um, also things like Hotjar, heat maps, anything like that. Yes, you know, it will provide you with more information and more data, but it does really slow down the website. Moving on, shameless plug there from me with the video, a um, new v video on the YouTube channel that I just thought I'd share with everyone. Um, then we've got a, let's see, what else have we got? Um, question from Mace, um, where can I learn Facebook ads from scratch? YouTube is you know, the best way if you wanna go down the free route, if you wanna go down the pay route and you want to invest into a coach and or mentor, then obviously I recommend the Lifestyle Design Mastery 2.0 course. We've got entire sections on Facebook ads where I literally just share my screen, show my own clients and show you how I've gotten results for them and what steps I take, how to analyze the data and so on and so forth. Um, let's see what else have we got. A question from Highlander Junior. How much do you digital marketers charge for Instagram ads, Facebook ads, and social media management altogether? Um, first of all, we do not offer social media management anymore as a service. It was too much of a headache um, and we just wanted to streamline everything. We basically chose to uh, pick one offer within the offer and really become an expert at that. So uh, not only do we only offer Facebook ads, Instagram ads does fall into that, um, but we only offer Facebook ads as a service and we only focus on e-com clients. Uh, we've got a few info product clients still on. We've got a few lead generation clients still on, but we are no longer actively seeking um, any more of those clients. And from now on, we only take on uh, specific e-com clients that are using Shopify and are making a certain amount uh, every single month. Why? Because we basically want to help winners win more and we basically just want to uh, focus on one particular uh, vertical and also make sure that we can become experts at it. So yes, you know, we can try and now get on a car dealership client, we can try and get on another info product client, an online coach client, etc. But that is just basically taken away from the time that we could be using to actually become an expert at e-com uh, Facebook ads. Then what else have we got? Um, a question from Daniel Lewis. Does anyone have experience dealing with construction trade services companies in regards to SMMA? I'm just wondering if it's viable and some advice. Uh, Daniel, with any industry, there are going to be clients um, that will benefit from Facebook ads and will benefit from having an agency work for them. But these clients do need to be of a certain degree. So if you've just got a local construction business that is consistent of two employees, then it might be too small and then it'll be hard to get a return on investment for them. However, if you're working with an extremely large construction company that is working internationally, that is maybe helping out with data centers that uh, Google, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Apple and all that are setting up, then yes, you know, there's a lot of money in there and um, it's a very viable you know, niche to look into with SMMA. Um, let's see what else we've got. Then we've got, um, let's see, we've got one more here, let's see. My custom conversion doesn't seem to fire up. The pixel is installed correctly, leads are coming through, however, nothing is showing up on my performance section on the ads manager. Let me know if you have, if any of you have dealt with this issue before. Kevin, the, um, 
what I would look at first and one sort of mistake that I consistently make is I'll set up these custom conversions as a page fire, which is the most common way of setting up a custom conversion. But I fail to take into consideration that a lot of people nowadays have ad blockers. So if this is affecting the performance of your ads, what you can do is look into button click events. Um, and basically that will only fire if someone clicks on a specific button rather than when the page loads, because if the page is loaded with an ad blocker, then yes, you know, those event, events won't fire. And I've also made this mistake with uh, outreach for a few clients as well. There was a client that um, was you know, quite a big client um, that I actually knew, you know, before I found them on Facebook, etc. I recognized the name, thought, wow, well, you know, let's have a look and see what they're doing in terms of ads. And they were running ads and they didn't have the pixel, at least so I thought. So I sent them a loom video, basically bashing everything that they were doing, saying, listen, you've got no pixel, you're throwing your money away, blah, blah, blah. And they replied, said, Josh, listen, uh, we're running the pixel, but thanks anyway. And I was like, wow, but when I checked, they're not running the pixel. And then I realized it. They had, I had ad blocker turned on and that's why the pixel didn't fire and that's why it looked to me that they didn't have the pixel, but they did. So that was a, quite an embarrassing moment for me there, but lesson learned and now every single time I see a website that hasn't got a pixel, I just double check uh, to make sure that my ad blocker is switched off and to see if, they, if they've got the pixel or not. Um, then moving on, we've got a question from Ryan. How do I gain my first client? How should I do my pitch? What industries and or businesses should I aim for? Because that's a lot of questions in one. Um, in terms of your first client, I had this conversation with Akash, um, Akash Joshi. If you're watching this, shout out to Hero. Um, we had a very interesting conversation about manual bidding, etc. And what he recommended and what I do definitely stand by is in terms of your first clients, look within your own network and just look to see if there's anyone that you can go above and beyond for um, in terms of results. Get the um, get a testimonial out of them. You know, so even if you take it on for free, you know, it's just to get your foot in the door, to get a testimonial, to get portfolio material, and also to get experience to see what it is like to have an actual client. Then from there, if you do a good job for them, then ask them for a referral. See if there's anyone else that that person knows within his industry that you can help as well. So that is one way of doing it. Second way of doing it is uh, by freelancer websites. So just looking into um, freelancer platforms like Upwork, you know, use the free course that is in my Facebook group, uh, get yourself onto the Upwork platform or any other freelancer platform, um, you know, to basically see what low hanging fruit there is available, what people are actively seeking a digital marketer. And then of course, you know, there's email outreach, etc. But um, I think those two are the best way, best two methods to start out with. Then in terms of how should I do my pitch, look at where they are currently at and look at where they're aspiring to go to. So it's literally, you know, A and B, and can you bridge that gap with social media marketing? So let's say, for example, they are a, um, did you mention any examples? No, you didn't. So let's say, for example, they are, what did we have before? A construction company. And it's a construction company that is uh, doing 10K a month in, um, in profit, and they wanna go to 20K a month in profit, and for that, they will obviously need, you know, a few more projects to work on. Then with social media marketing, with Facebook ads, you can help them get in more projects. And if you're confident that you can get them from 10K to 20K a month, then you can pitch your service. And that is basically how you need to do it. Um, see if you can bridge that gap from their current situation to their desired situation. And if you can, then by all means, pitch your service. Um, in terms of industries and businesses, like I said, every single business, every single industry um, can benefit from Facebook ads, can benefit from additional marketing, additional traffic sources, etc. You just need to make sure that you pick out the best businesses and make sure that they are big enough to afford your retainer and additional ad spend. And you know, obviously then you will need to get them a retain on investments. So we'll do a few more before we wrap up this video here. Um, let's see. A Science got his, Syed has got his first client, that's great. And moving on, we've got Irma says she is new to the group. Um, everyone is helping each other out, therefore I would love your help as well. Run ads for an e-com brand, selling cashmere coat for about $1,000. The brand doesn't have much data because it's new with no customer list, little over 200 ads a cart, Instagram with 16K followers. The daily budget is 100. What would you suggest me to do in this situation when the product is relatively expensive? Um, oh, funny enough, I've actually already replied to this, but um, what I will do is focus, What I'll, actually what I'll try and do is see with the 200 add to carts, can you retarget those people? If you can, uh, if it will run, because 200 add to carts is relatively small, it's, you know, 200 people that have added to carts is obviously great, but 
Um, sometimes Facebook won't allow that as a retargeting campaign. So set up a catalog sales campaign um, last 180 days because you know it is quite an expensive coat. Last 180 days, uh, retarget people that have added to cart but haven't purchased, see if that will run. And then from there, just focus on the top of the funnel. Then in terms of the ads itself, as I've already mentioned in the comments here, try and get the outbound click through rate of your ads to be 1.5% or more, just so that you know that on the front end, you are driving a lot of traffic and that you're not losing a lot of people on the front end with the ads because you've also mentioned that at the time, the CPMs are high. I'm targeting the US, I'm thinking targeting different countries as the business ships worldwide. I would still focus on tier one countries, but like I said, the reason why your CPM is high is usually because your cost per click is low, uh, Your sorry, your, your click-through rate is low and your cost per click is high, which means that the ad is not as relevant as Facebook would like it to be. So try out different images, try out um, different audiences if you're not confident in the audience. Again, just use common sense in terms of the audience. Focus a lot on the image. Try and get the outbound click rate to 1.5% or more. And then you'll notice that your CPM will naturally drop. You'll drive more traffic through that flow as well. And then from there, you've got a bit more data to analyze with without spending more and more money. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll have one more question before we wrap up. Let's see what have we got. What do you guys usually ask in a meeting? Another question from Highlander Junior. I uh, just want to hear your ideas. Um, so as I've mentioned here as well, I asked them where they're currently at and where they aspire to go to. I try and shy away from questions like what is your cost per click on average? What, are, what is the um, click-through rate like on your ads, etc.? You know, I'll do that ana analysis when I actually get that client as a client or when I get access to the ads. Um, what is important for me? If it's an e-com client, what is their profit margin? What is their average order value? And like I said, you know, where are they currently at in terms of their numbers and where are they aspiring to go to? If, for example, their profit profit margin is 50%, then I know, okay, I need at least a return ad spend of two to break even. Um, and then from there, of course, I need to work out what the return ad spend or return on investment needs to be, including my own retainer. And then from there, you know, you can work out, is it profitable? Is it, or not necessarily profitable, is it realistic for you to take on this client? If you do think it's realistic, if you do think you get them a return on investment, then by all means, pitch your service. But those are basically the questions that I ask. So that is it for today's video. I'll probably wrap up this here. If you want to connect with people within this group, if there are a few questions that you've still got um, that you feel like you haven't really gotten an answer to just yet, then by all means, request access to the group. Um, you know, basically benefit from the free resources in the group. You know, there's a free playbook, there's a free mini course in there as well, and just an entire community of people of, uh, you know, like-minded individuals that are all on the same track um, as you and all basically, you know, going down the same route as you or as you're aspiring to go to. Um, so definitely check that out. Like this video if you got something out of it. Comment down below what kind of videos you'd like to see from this channel next. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.